Good morning. Cheers. Thanks for joining me today. It's a overcast, rainy day here in Portland, Oregon. We're going to do some solo guitar playing today. I'll show you some of my favorite chord shapes, packs, subs. How's everyone doing? Dave, thanks for joining in. You're always the first. All right, so many of you know from the description, today's song is the classic, the Christmas song, written by, who is it written by Mel Torm? There's three people credited to this. Well, two people, Mel Torme and somebody else. If anybody knows the first name, type it in. Um, beautiful song, give credit where it's due, right? So I've got my arrangement here. If you, many of you I know are already on Patreon, so just grab it, it's posted at the all tiers. If you're not on Patreon, um, join. <laughs> okay, so uh, this is just a so easy solo guitar arrangement in the key, the original key of E flat, the popular key. I'm gonna walk you through it note for note, just super slow. You're gonna have it down at the end of the lesson, okay? So I'll probably say that again. Sorry, it's so dark today. It's a little bit of a dark day, but this music will brighten your day. Oh, thanks. Thanks, Jason, I appreciate it. Bob, Bob Wells. Wasn't he the Texas Playboys? No, I'm joking. <laughs> Um, I'm going to go through some exercises that are kind of fun first to get started. Good morning, Yukon. We're in the key of E flat. So something that I think is important, if you want to please grab your guitar. This is a little, you know, a little tutorial, um, maybe a little workout theoretically as well. But one thing that I feel is very important, no matter what key you're in, um, is to do this exercise. I just call it diatonic. So you kind of, it's important that you know what you're doing to make it more musical as well, not just reading tabs. So that this is part of it too. So in the key of E flat, this is a little quiz here. So grab your guitar with me. I've got my strat today. Um, e flat major seven. These are the diatonic seventh chords. And I was going through this yesterday with a student of mine talking about what the word diatonic is. Good morning, Bob. Jason, good to see you again. Thanks. Uh, diatonic means in the key. So I want to talk about two things today, and this three things maybe. This will open some doors up before we hit my arrangement. Ben, yes, I'm going to get you through the arrangement. I've got a private lesson coming up at 10. So even if we'll be here for 90 minutes, we'll do it. E flat major 7. Okay, think about this, please. The 2 chord, that's the 1 chord, is F minor 7. The 3 chord is G minor 7. The 4 chord is A flat major 7. I'm going to do it up here, but I might do it down here. B flat seven, the five chord, okay? The six chord, C minor seven. And the seventh chord is D minor seven flat five. This is again, the word is diatonic. So it's not D diminished, that's a fully diminished, even though that's often a sub, because you'll put it as a five chord with a B flat in the bass. So again, what I'm doing is an exercise, just walking up the scale. Might add a 13. C minor 7. Might do this is kind of just what I'm calling chord melody noodling. But it's so sweet. Okay, so again, that's just in the key. Just have fun and I that's what something I do when I pick up my guitar. If I know I'm gonna play a song like um the song, the Christmas song, I might just play some diatonic chords. 165. You know, just kind of goofing around a little bit before I bust into it. And that can also be for uh, Misty. 
if you're in this key, you know, um, just kind of some 165. I also like Blue Moon in the key of uh, E flat. <laughs> Okay, that chord I was going to go to is not in the key, so I'm good thing. Um, so anyways, diatonic. The other thing I want to talk about really quickly here is the idea of secondary dominance, because these jazz songs are so hip. They're not just diatonic. So this is where I think it's very valuable um, as a study to do this. Play the one chord and then play the five chord of that one chord. So it, on the guitar, if you're, this is a cool trick. If you know where your, your one chord is, the five is right here, the bass. Root, fifth, root. So give it its dominant, okay? This is, since I'm on the one chord, this is called the primary dominant. Isn't that nice? Just one, five, one. I'm altering that five a little bit, put a sharp five for color. And here's a two. F minor seven, notice a little noodling here with my pinky. And then the five. Is that nice? And actually, that's almost like this. That's one, six, two, five, <laughs> for example. But there, that's the five of the six. Okay, of the two. I have to get my numbers right this morning. One, two, three. Here's the five of the three. And this will explain a lot of the jazz songs that you look at later. Like, gee, that dominant is in, in the key of E flat. Oh, it's a five of the three. And it's going to go to the three. And also, once you learn that, you also learn that, oh, I could do the diminished sub. So you think, okay, D7, what's the three of D? It's F sharp. That's the leading tone. I can do the diminished off of the third. So you'll hear these progressions that do stuff like this. One, sharp one dim. Well, that's just a sub for the C7. It's E diminished seven. Isn't that nice? So again, these little chromatic diminished chords. And here's that four. Here's that dominant of the four. And often you'll hear like this. And then you put two fives. And that's gonna like miss you there. The one, the one turns to dominant. And then we have these borrowed chords, minor four. You turn the four that's typically major into minor. And that's gonna be in the Christmas song later when I say borrowed four chord. Now you know what I'm talking about. It's being pulled from the minor key, the parallel minor. So instead of E flat major, E flat minor. If you like this topic, if you want more of this, let me know. I don't know how much theory you want on a Sunday morning, <laughs> but I do have all these lessons on Patreon as well. You have to check out my music theory course. It's all over the place. I've got like hours and hours of it. So the best thing to do is to watch it, watch the videos and then um, listen to it over and over. And pretty soon it's going to bleed into your, your, your daily language <laughs> when you're talking. Oh, so that song goes to the minor four. So anyways, these secondary dominants are really beautiful and magical and the diminished sub. Okay, let's get to some playing here. Again, good morning and thanks for joining me. I appreciate the like, the share, the whatever you wanna do. Uh, I'm loading it up myself. I just posted the PDFs and tabs last night on Patreon. So I'm gonna, um, look at it with you and if you don't have it that's okay if you're not a patreon member i'm not disappointed maybe just a little bit no just kidding um but i'm glad you're here just tuning in playing some guitar with us this morning i know most of you are patreon members who are watching this um i'm going to walk you through the arrangement note for note okay beautiful beautiful song okay we're in the key of e flat sorry about that if you don't like e flat but um, you'll, learn, you'll learn to like it anyway. So the first chord is E flat six. Uh, this is my choice here. I wanted a, just a plain old major six chord. Again, when I have the root, this is something here, a little hack again, not necessarily hack, but when you have the root on the top the melody, I often like a six. If you wanted a seven, it would sound like this. Got to get that major seven here, get the third. 
mean, don't get me wrong, that's a really pretty chord, but that's a little bit more uh, tricky to grab. And I usually will save that as an ending chord. Let me just get my iPad here so it's not going to uh, die out here. So give me a second, please. Uh, talk amongst yourself <laughs> or type in the chat how much you love these live streams and any song requests that you have for me. Uh, let's see, I gotta do this. Oh, interesting. It's not letting me um, change the the lock. Okay. So you might see me periodically more more so than not touch my iPad screen to keep it going, so it won't die out. I just apologize about that technical. I don't know where my my uh, tech person is today. <laughs> That's a joke. All right, let's get started. And again, I'm going to periodically, I'm just looking at it with you, assuming you have, you're on, you grab my Patreon, my tabs, it's in the description. If not, if you want to grab it and join Patreon, go ahead. Um, the coffee tier is sold out. There's now the Nespresso tier. There might be one more coffee slot left um, on, on Patreon. And these are, I, I want to say that all of the, my live streams, which I'm doing about five days a week, uh, when available and when my hand's not hurting, um, been gigging every day too. So uh, that's what, and some of you asked me about my live streams, why they're early in the morning, because I have gigs in the nights. I mean, I'm gigging seven days a week right now. Um, it's going to lighten up a little bit more in December, in late December. So I'll probably try some live streams in the uh, evening as well. I just, this is nice for me to grab my coffee and to go on YouTube and to chat with you guys and to play it. Okay. You're probably saying, Tracy, let's get to the song. So let's do it. E flat six. <laughs> Okay, this is a great way for you to know, understand what's how to harmonize a melody. The next part of this is it jumps up an octave, kind of like somewhere with rainbow. And I'm keeping it just as an E flat sound. So I'm doing this triad. We could do an E flat six, but I'm just doing it. This is an easy version again, all right? So I have this. This is a great hack, just E flat triad. So we got E flat to E flat. Make sure you know the melody and just pluck it, you, you can use a pick or your fingers. Now we're gonna to go to this inversion of a B flat seven, the third on top, okay? And that's like this D seven shape down here. And I'm gonna bar it. And like I was saying earlier, I like to extract the melodies from shapes by just plucking, holding the shape. So that's where the melody is. I'm going to tell it to you in terms of tabs in case you don't have the tabs. 10, bar it, 8, 11 on the second string, and 9 on the second. Okay. 10, 8, 11, 9, but with the chord shape. And I want that ringy quality to it. So get used to doing this. If you have a pick, plectrum, go for it. Do whatever you want. Okay. So it's one, five, like I just said earlier, one, five, one. Okay. That's a great chord melody songwriting thing to do. It's just go one, five, one. Now, when you arrive on the one here, we're on the third. And we're using this drop two voice and grip shape, I call them. So we have this. Now, this is a, a TK thing, TK being me. E flat major seven, E dim seven. There's that secondary dominant with the diminished leading tone I was telling you about earlier. F minor nine. B flat 13. I wanted to keep this note on the melody note, but I wanted to create some movement. So I went like this one, six, two, five, just while holding that G note. 
here we go. Jesus. Okay. Good little chord melody practice there. Keep doing that. I'm gonna get my see if I can get that iPad stabilized. By the way, if you're just tuning in, you can grab the tabs. I won't keep doing this, but you, you'll see that my um <laughs> my iPad's I think it's slow on batteries. That's why it's it's going into auto softness. And then we go back to that E flat six, but this time we don't go to this E flat triad. We just go to C minor seven. C minor seven is equivalent to E flat six. It's just all in the same family, so it's very diatonic. Okay. However, now, like I, I referenced the song Misty earlier, we, the one chord now turns to dominant, but we use a 2-5 in front of that to pull us to where? This is a good thing to, I'm going to quiz you before I tell you the answer. When the, you'll hear me say this often, especially my students are sick of it. When the one chord of the key that you're in, when, when the one turns to dominant, what is that going to pull you toward? Hold your hand up so I can see. Four, good. <laughs> I can't see you, just joking. Uh, so you have this. These are great little chord melody phrases you can learn. That was E flat six with the E flat on top and then C minor seven, but it's I'm thinking just the E flat, you can do this. You can put the C in there, but I don't want it. I just, it's still an E flat chord. I just don't want to hear that bass note. And then the B flat minor, you can put the B flat here in the bass. That actually sounds really good. And then E flat seven. It's a great little two five lick. I like the little hammer to the A flat major seven with the fifth. So the melody was this down the scale but with the chords this is now pulling us to the four chord secondary dominance just get that little lick down Thanks, Jason. That's a nice move. I don't know if you're referring to that one or an earlier move, but yeah, these are all nice little movements. You're going to enjoy this arrangement quite a bit. It's going to be one that you're going to play all day long today. You can just play it rubato. It doesn't even have to be in time. You're not playing with a band. Or unless you're playing with your backing track, then you're going to want to practice it in time. Then you want to be strict. One, two, three, and four. And one, two, three, four. One, two, three, and four. And one, two. And then G7 sharp five. Again, I'm keeping that melody note. So A flat minor, A flat major seven, G seven sharp five, and that's the five of the six. We're in the key of E flat and C minor. I was going to quiz you guys. I just gave it away. C minor is the relative minor of E flat, the six. So that G seven belongs to C minor. These these are called secondary dominants when they're not the primary dominant. Nice sound. Good. This is my strat. I like it. It's really nice and warm. Um, thanks, Carlos. Appreciate the comment there. Glad. Let me know if it's too loud or if it's distorting or anything like that. For this song, I don't really want any distortion. Sometimes I like a little bit of that breaking up sound for some swing. But this one went really fat and warm. Okay, we're going to do that again. This is a slow walkthrough of hopefully an easy arrangement, but this song... It's not an easy song because it's written by Mel Torme and Bob Wells. You know, it's a, it's a classic jazz composition. 
Begin to memorize. I'm doing this many times, very slowly for you. One, two, three. A lot of common tone approaches here for you to learn. A little bit of ad lib. You can do the diminished sub. That's not written there, but I'm just saying like, you might have this chord here. You know, like some licks, some fills around this, or maybe if you're a gypsy jazzer, you could go do this. <laughs> or maybe this. Some diminished rounds, but none of that. We don't need that today. Uh, we just do this C minor seven, Yuletide. I don't know the word, Yuletide carols. Yuletide carols, singing song. So that was um, C minor in the third. Okay, right here. This is a grip, top two, grip, shake. And then A flat minor six. Remember, that's a borrowed four chord. Okay, A flat minor. A flat major is a four. A flat minor is a minor four, the parallel minor four. This is the theory of it. I want you to understand what the composers are doing. It's a pretty complex song, so um, I may have to think twice about some of these modulations and stuff that's coming up. Uh, so we have that A flat major seven, and then C minor, A flat minor six, and notice the six degrees in melody here. Grab the melody, back to that E flat major seven, and then now the melody note is here. You still hold it. And then now the melody is on this note. And that's an A minor 7 flat 5 with the 11 on top. And basically it's like a D7 chord. We're, mod we're going to modulate. It's, it's a prep chord. 2, 5, now G major 7. So this is very hip. There, there should be G minor in the key of E flat because that's the three. So they're modulating to the major three parallel of the minor. Pretty hip. David, measure five, discuss the inner voice changes of the A flat minor six as written. Discuss the major. Let's check it out. Wait, what's measure five? <laughs> three, four, five. Did I write that wrong? Oh, oh, dang. <laughs> There's a typo. David, I think that's what you're hearing is a typo. Um, unless I, I don't know, I wrote this arrangement out many years ago. No, that's not right. So yeah, measure, thanks David for pointing that out. I think, I think you're spotting an error on my, on my tabs. Oops, got to edit that, this video out later. No, just joking. Um, I make mistakes all the time. So David, I really appreciate that. Yeah. Thank you for your for your good eyes and really um, letting me know. Uh, I'll update that. I'm actually putting this onto Sound Slice just so you guys know. Uh, so that I'll, I'm going to reprint a new version and put it onto um, Patreon with that way you have it with the uh, chord grids on top, and that's going to make um, practicing and learning easier. So it'll look kind of like this. I'm just I just put it on there, and I'm going to fix it. Like right now, <laughs> I'm not just kidding. Uh, but here's what Sound Slice looks like. So this is, I'm doing it right now. I haven't done it yet for this song, even though it's such a classic, but I'm gonna fix it right. Actually, yeah, I could literally do that right now before I forget. <laughs> there. There, thanks. Thanks, David. David, you're the best. Best editor. So it's fixed. Um, that way later, for those Patreon members, I'm not gonna, I, I wanna make sure you know, I'm not gonna, um, what's the word? I gotta tell you, all of my Sound Slice practice videos are available at the Silver Tier, okay? In case you're wondering. All of my Sound Slice practice, and I've got hundreds of them for my chord melody arrangements. Sometimes you'll have my fingers on there and I'm gonna be adding my video on there as well. But that way, when you play with it later, Then you can play along with the sound slice practice video. That's that's a great way to practice. I mean, right now this is 
better to teach it to you. But if you want to play along with it, I always recommend using Sound Slice. Um, and my Sound Slices are only available on Patreon at the Silver Tier. You can have access to all of them. So I usually, and when people ask me where should I join with Patreon, I say, uh, you know, the Silver Tier is a good place to start if you want the videos and you go up to the Gold Tier or the Platinum Tier. Um, but if you just want all of my tabs and PDFs in Sound Slice, then the Silver Tier gets you everything. Okay. Just like to disclose that because it's kind of confusing with all the various tiers being offered. Um, but these live streams, the tabs, at least, the tabs are available for the live streams at all tiers. Okay. And then these videos, they get archived at the gold tier and on YouTube membership. I leave a lot of them up and I put them back often for the weekends or whatnot to holidays um, public. Um, let's keep going, you guys. You're doing awesome. I think we should do a nice little review here. guys doing you get that far again many of you already have the tabs in front of you the pdf there is that one correction over here and i just want to say a word about my um my technique i'm just right now i'm using my fingers because I, I don't know where a pick is <laughs> but i really do like to use my fingers quite a bit um i'm just gonna maybe kind of get a little bit closer so you can see my right hand when i do that all right but let me know if you like this view or not it's kind of a weird view but it's okay. Let's see. I'm doing a lot of these little rolls just to fill in. I love that. And sometimes I'll isolate the melody like this. See the roll? Gonna check this out. I mean, so I'm pinky. You're not supposed to use your pinky in classical guitar, but this is in classical guitar. Filler. So I had a lot of these little filler just to create movement. Otherwise, it's just gonna sound like this one, two, three. So that's a little boring. So just do this. where we left off G major seven. Okay. G major, G major seven. I'm going to do that again. Let me know in the comments if you like this view. That way you don't have to see my face too, which might be a better thing too. It's kind of weird, but I like to see you guys. <laughs> it's a joke. Dave says, I've explored the web for sites, and this is one of the best I've discovered. Oh, you're being too nice. Thank you. Well, I'm gonna I'm gonna say something. I you know, my my lessons are geared for as I'm really big on just explaining things and breaking things down as best as I can, as slow as possible. I mean, I've taught over 30 years, so um, I've worked with a lot of students at all different levels, and I do feel like I can help communicate. Hmm. I am getting a little bit low on coffee though. It's a little bit of a bummer. It's Sunday, rainy Sunday morning, that's why. And if you guys, uh, um, thanks to Eric yesterday for supplying the coffee for my for the live stream. If you feel like tipping, there's a tip button, a little cash box. I'm not gonna ask for it, but you can do that if you want. And that fuels my next session, my coffee. Um, so again, I'm just gonna zoom in a little bit just so you can see my right hand technique. Oh, good. Thanks, Dave. I might do this just as I, uh, as we review some of it. I really want you to get this, but I want to see. I want you to see these little small details as well, even the little hammer-ons that I like to do. That 
that's a diminished sub for the D. That's a 2-5. Now we're going to go to G major 7. Okay. I'm hoping you guys got that far with me. Um, and I say easy, right? I say this is an easy arrangement, but this song is not easy. <laughs> so it's like, it's kind of a, um, I don't know, contradictory, I guess you could say. It's, it's, a, it's an easy arrangement to play, but the song itself is really already jazzy and challenging. So don't, don't, don't be hard on yourself if you're like, hey, I don't have that yet. And again, you can watch this video again and use my Sound Slice practice video that I've been put on Patreon at the silver tier, you guys, just to clarify. And um, we have to go on, though. Now we're at the first ending of the song, okay? It is going to repeat in a second. Uh, this repeats three times. So once you get that A section down, you're going to get really, whoever is listening to you practice going to get pretty tired of that A section. No, it's so pretty. Uh, but then we're actually going to have that three times. So then it will be 75% of the way down. We just get the B section, we're done, okay? So that's why I'm really focusing so much on this A section with you. I always say this, learn that A section well. Because when you have a song that's A, A, B, A song form, A section is 75% of the song. All right. Now we're at the first ending. Just so you know, I'm going to show you the sheet music in case you're just tuning in. You grab the tabs. It's on the bottom. The first ending. G major 7. Okay, we just had a beautiful little 2-5. And what's uh, sweet about that 2-5 is that, remember, the th it goes to the 3. The 3 in the key of E flat major is G minor. So that's 2-5. <laughs> should go to G minor, but that's not what they do. They go 2-5 to major. Ah, they fool us. That's the, that's the trick there, so it's kind of a really uh, deceptive cadence there. We're now in the 3, and then now we have a 2-5, and we hit that G major 7. You can also do it here. Same thing. Okay. Um, and then A flat minor 7, D flat 7 to the G flat major 7 crazy modulation there right and then that's you can think of that as like a this going here i that sounds just so fine is that it's g flat major seven is the borrowed or tritone it's like a sub and then it goes here to the two five i might not be 100 percent correct on that theory but uh, so basically we have a two five <laughs> just it goes down a half step it's quite common like this two five one and then two, five, one, two, five, one. So if you're, if you're a two, five lover, you're going to love this movement here. But how I harmonize it is I use what I call the magic shape. The shape is easy to play. It's just stacked fourths. It's a little bit ambiguous because it's not a tertian chord. Tertian really defines a chord. Tertian meaning thirds. One, three, five, seven. This is not tertian. This is a quartal chord stacked fourth. There's more theory than you need to know, but it's ambiguous and it's sweet. It's magic because of the ambiguity. So we don't know what it really is. It could be, but once I define it, see, I can put that, but I like this more. It's a little bit more modern. So that's what I'm doing there. Long story short, this G major seven and then this. Eight eight nine nine. Tell you, I'll tell you guys in tabs in case you're not looking at my lead sheet, my tabs here, and then slide it down the whole step. And then now we're gonna do D flat thirteen. Beautiful chord melody, and I'm leaving. I'm omitting the root here. These are just on the top four strings. So we have this. And then it's harmonized. I'm just showing you the melody first. And then it's harmonized with this. Not that either. <laughs> okay. Do that a few times. That's a good little 2 5. A little modern E. A flat minor, 11. Modal. And then D flat, 13. D flat nine. I'm just um, I'm omitting the bass. I'm just kind of playing the bass with my finger so you could hear it. Well, this one you could do like this. I just want to get fancy, like I'm Stanley Jordan or something. Um, is that sweet? This is my arrangement, so hey, taking credit for it. 
that's why I don't, I, I mentioned to um, a Patreon member, I don't, I often don't watch other people's lessons or tutorials or arrangements because I don't want to be influenced by them. I just like to come up with my own stuff. But in this case, I'm glad you're watching mine so I can help you come, you know, at, at your stage of where you're at. Probably, it's probably nice to have somebody um, show you the techniques, um, the theory, explain the theory. I mean, I'll try to make sure I go through it very thoroughly with you. Um, so we have that two five and then G flat major seven. That's a great little two five one pack chord melody. Okay, you do it here. Two five one and all over the place. These are great licks, okay? Um, I might have to extract that one particular phrase and put that on my chord melody quick licks. By the way, on Patreon, I have the series and it's at all tier levels. It's called the quick lick series. There's 109 leads that has all my little favorite licks, um, quick licks. And so check that out if you're on Patreon, but I have yet to explore the quick lick series. It's for all tiers tabbed out. And uh, it's it's awesome. But I have a quick lick chord melody version as well, where I have these, I extract stuff like this, like, oh, this is a cool lick. Hey, Steven. Welcome. I don't think I've seen your name. Are you a Patreon member? Johnny, welcome in fog country. It's a little foggy day here in Portland town. Um, let's go back to Stephen's question here. When the one becomes dominant, it brings us to the four because a dominant one would be the five of a four. Exactly. Yeah. Um, that it's just the, the root movement, you know, the, the, the concept of the fifth, E flat, in this case, E flat major. If you turn that to the dominant, and now it's going to be the five of the four. And then we have the minor four there too later. Hey, that's nice, Eric. Thanks for joining in. I appreciate it. Cheers, Eric. Yesterday's session. <laughs> it was sponsored. The coffee was sponsored by Eric. I appreciate that. And yesterday's session, by the way, was really great. I hope you guys watched it or or go back to it. It was on the beautiful song, "My One and Only Love," as requested by Chris. Which Chris, I'm not sure if you're from Texas, is tuned in today, but please feel free to send requests. Um, I will, I will go for it if it's a song that I like, <laughs> um, there is a request for it never entered my mind, which is a really nice ballad. I always like Frank Sinatra's version and Mike, uh, Miles Davis. I was going to say Mike Davis. I don't know who Mike Davis is. Um, I was also thinking about the song, the beautiful standard, um, as time goes by. Do you guys like that song? You must remember this. A kiss is still a kiss. A sigh is still a sigh. It's a great song. As time goes by, let me know if you guys like that one. I will show you my chord melody arrangement for it. And show you, teach you the song. It's a really beautiful song. Okay, let's go on. We just have this sweet two five one in G flat major. I know it's not a comfortable key, but don't worry about that. Don't think about you know, <laughs> keys, because like on the guitar, we just move things around. <laughs> Works for me, Yukon. Are you talking about as time goes by? Yeah, that's a good one. And then we do the same little lick here, going back to E flat. And I think I need to, I'm going to fill in this chord here. I just wrote one, like this. Everybody knows you guys got to memorize. I'm just relearning it too. I haven't played it. In a while. I don't. It's not like I play this song every every gig. Uh, maybe once or twice a year for my solo guitar gigs um, during the season. Um. But I have yet to play it this this time around so far. I've been playing some of the Charlie Brown Christmas songs as I have taught on on here. So this is a good chance for me to review. Uh, you guys, we're at the first ending here in case you want to see the tabs. Screenshot it, whatever you want to do. 
screen shoot it. <laughs> Is that the word? Do a screenshot. I'll just say that if you want to, if you don't want to join Patreon, <laughs> I'm not, I'm not upset. Um, we don't need you. <laughs> no, seriously, you can uh, be great to have you. If you're not on Patreon, got some really wonderful members. I'm just going through this again. Actually, here, I'll zoom in on my hand so you don't have to see my face. You guys probably appreciate that. It's called side slipping. <laughs> getting some, sorry, getting extreme close up. Get that last one. That's the same thing, the same movement. That's two, five, one. And that's the first half. Now we can just practice it over and over. If you got that far, that's pretty good. I messed up on this two, five, two. Or what did I love this part? And then this two five. And then so seriously, that's where I would practice that over and over. This super slow. Diminish up, you go. And again. One thing I do a lot that I was noticing is that I do a lot of these slides. You know, that's not written on the paper, but you want to add those lyrical and those hammers. You want to add that stuff in. To me, that makes it more vocal-like, uh, you know, side slipping, hammers, all that good stuff. To me, add that stuff in. That's the first half of the song, you guys. Congratulations, if you've got that far. Eric, big fan of Time Goes By. Hey, thank you. Cheers. <laughs> me too. That's a gorgeous song. Classic, classic. Again, I'm hitting a lot of the classics. If you haven't already looked, checked out my live streams, they're all actually, I posted them, they're all public right now, but they'll both go back to um, YouTube members only and, and on Patreon. Um, I've been hitting all the classics. Misty, I can't even name them all. Misty, if I had you, dream a little dream, all of me, everything, just these are all just cloud, that's in the best standards written. Fly me to the moon, nature boy. Man, just look in my my live streams from the past month i'm trying to hit all the great songs and i am open to any suggestions but i was thinking as time goes by especially this time of year the end of the year it's a nice song to hit okay let's go on to the b set actually any questions on that at all you guys got me for another 40 minutes if you want i needed more coffee after this so and again if you're enjoying this and you want to send me a cup of coffee just do a little not physical cup of coffee but you could feel free to tip me and that's awesome i appreciate it um, so you can grab the tabs here, like I said, this is all written out, but I'm just showing like the performance aspect of it too in the analysis that's not written here that I'm going to go beyond the page for you. Okay, so what we need to do now is not play through all again, but I'm going to show you from that last part of it, the A section that is, we have this. <laughs> Now we have to go to the second ending. Now it goes G minor seven, which is a three okay. inversion. You can do it over here or here. I wrote it here. 
and then C, this is a cool hack by the way. This is a C triad. I know the chord says C7, but guess what? You're gonna hit that <laughs> the flat seven right there. So um, I have a couple ways of doing that. Oh, I'm looking at my tabs. I would I do this. This is a this is one of my favorite uh, chord melody style hacks, like this. I didn't do G minor sound like that. I take it back. I wasn't looking at my my arrangement. I typically would, but because I know I'm gonna do this. So that's it. I love the shape, this minor seven formation. And that can also be a major six. And then it can be dominant if you add that note. Okay, it's very, very versatile. If any any fans of Lenny Bro, he did that quite a bit. And when it's playing, they'll do these leads and just use that bar shape. Uh, David's question um, regarding my nails. Gosh, I, I shape my nails. I shape my nails so they're like little, uh, I hope they're clean. <laughs> so they're like little picks. So I get just a little bit of flesh, but more more so the nail. My foot, I'm not, I'm not feeling the string on my flesh. I mean, I do push against it, but I'm plucking with my nails. Really, not long, not like a classical guitar player. Okay, we have to go on here, you guys. I do want to finish this arrangement with you, but you're gonna love this hack. These are just on the top four strings here, and then F minor seven. B flat seven, E flat six. There we go. Now we finish the second ending going into the B section. I'm going to do that again. That's so pretty. It's so easy. Again, this is an easy arrangement. It's not going to take you hours to learn. Just right now, you can learn with me. One hour. F minor seven. That's the third degree on the top. B flat seven. That's the third degree resolve. Okay. You can do the F minor seven. These are things you can practice, two, five, one. And you can even add the bass in here. Okay, now Santa's on his way, so let's do that. Uh, you're going to get an ad from probably maybe Santa himself, I don't know, Christmas uh, time of year. We're trying to sell you everything. Join Patreon. <laughs> Speaking of, they know that. Uh, can I sub a G flat, G sharp minor six for the G sharp augmented? Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's an, I call it A flat minor six. It still is that altered sound. That's one of my hacks here. G, oh, wait, for the G sharp augmented? What you talking about? What, I don't know what, you have to tell me what measure you're talking about, Eric. What measure are you looking at? I think he meant G, G, maybe you're talking about G7 sharp five. I don't know if he meant to say G sharp augmented. He said G sharp, do you mean G? Anyways, well, what measure are you talking about, Eric? By the way, did you guys get any good ads? <laughs> Tell me what ads you saw, I'm curious. Teaches me a lot about you. In the A section, yeah, I, I don't know. I Yeah, I think I know what you're talking about. And I think he, I think he meant to say, okay, yeah, I think he meant to say right here uh, where it says G, G7 sharp five. I think you, you typed in G sharp, but I think you just meant the letter G, not G sharp, but yeah. In that case, G sharp augmented. You can put A flat minor six. Totally, so it creates an altered sound, like having a flat nine in the bass. And that's one of my favorite scales to play. When I have it like this, I just play A flat melodic minor, and that's a great altered sound. You go up a half step from the dominant chord that you're on. If I had my loop pedal, I would do this for you for a minute. Then I'd go. That's an A flat melodic minor scale against the G sharp. Which I said the same thing here. <laughs> G7 sharp five. This beautiful sounds. Look at that. Listen to this. If you like that flavor, then you run the melodic minor a half step above. 
good trick. Thanks, Eric, for asking. Yeah, a lot of the stuff you use for your soloing too. That's why I'm going through this so carefully to demonstrate that this is how you can also get great soloing ideas. Um, okay, guys, we are at uh, the second, we're at the B section here. I'm going to continue on. Maybe some of you, that's enough for you just learning the A section, but the B section is just uh, just eight bars long and it's got a whole bunch of good stuff in it. They know that Santa's on his way. So we have, I'm doing octaves like this. I don't know if this is allowed. I said it like this. Or, you know, you'd have to wear it. I'm doing it on like this shape. Okay. Doesn't matter. Do it how you want. We're in the now we're modulated. The uh the one chord <laughs> turns to dominant, which is gonna pull us where? You got it, the four. But in front of it, instead of just going right to the uh, the dominant, you put a two in it, so you get a two five movement. So it's a B flat minor seven to the E flat that seven. So they know that sound. And you get B flat minor seven, the third on top, P e flat seven. And I'm not doing the full chord, it's actually a nine, but I'm just doing the partial. And that's an A flat major nine chord. Uh, we're actually omitting the third, so it's kind of a hack. Here's A flat major seven, but here's A flat major nine. We're actually, we lost our third, but I'm okay with that if you're okay with it. People will still call that in books A flat major nine, even though there's no third. So if you want to be technical, it's, it's not. So that's a two five one. Like this. F seven. And then this part here, I have to see what I wrote here. Oh, this. Oh, this part's cool. This part's tricky. Now, so I have to keep pushing this stupid thing to, to lighten it up. Did you guys get that voice leading? I like this. You know what song I'm going to reference, right? Can't help but smile. So I went like this. And then six nine instead of major nine. I guess I should just did major nine the same thing as before, but it hears a different voice a la Django. Major 6-9. But check out this. This is awesome. Oops. I wrote this. This gives it a little bit more of a resolve feel. And this does have a third. If you're wondering, what chord is this? Here's an A-flat triad. is how I like to teach it. Plain old triad. Here's Take these to the five and the eight, slide it up to the six and the nine, respectively. So you have this. Instead of triad, you have this. Six, nine. So hopefully that connection there. Oh, I know my triad, A flat major. Now I take the five and the eight and slide it up to the six and the nine. Pentatonic. Tonic chord. Okay. Let's keep going. We've got to finish this. I need more coffee before my upcoming private lesson. the same thing that we just did. I use that same descending cliche, the stairway to heaven. And I'm just goofing around getting the melody note on the top string. So if yeah, that's new for you, just goof around with it. You know, just do this. Add the nine on. Get that voice leading. And again, it's going to sound like stairway. So I'm like this. this. Um, Yukon, 
yeah, it's hard. <laughs> I'm joking. Um, there's two aspects of it. And that's why, again, I think the understanding of it, if you understand what's happening, you'll be able to do it. You'll be, you'll be like, okay, I get this part of it. The resolve or this. But then you have to get the melody on top. And then you try piecing it together slowly. Cool lick. That's a cool lick. You get that voice leading in there. The inner voice leading. Okay. And the chart might not show that. It actually does. This is a TK arrangement there. And I don't know if I stole it from somebody here. And if they, you know, it's just a common thing to do. It's just do that chromatic. I do that everywhere. <laughs> uh, throw in that chromatic descending cliche, I call it. The blue skies cliche. Ooh, that'd be a good song to teach you guys. Blue skies, smiling at me. That we can really get that cliche. Nothing but blue skies. Do I see? Hmm. Hmm. Blue. Um, if you guys don't know that one. Learning these songs and the chords, you know, it will help you. Uh, quite a bit. So always learn melodies and just basic chords and copy. Let's continue. We're doing good. We're on G flat major nine. Um, actually, let's just, let's just repeat that. We have some time. So we have this. Two, three, F seven. Here we go. C minor seven, but if if you would be one hundred percent correct, it's C minor eleven. In the faith book, you'll just say C minor seven, but it's C minor eleven. So let me show you what an eleven is. Here's C minor seven. Take the fifth, go down a whole step to the four. The four is the same as eleven. And we have a flat seven. We got the flat three. We got the root. If you do this, that's called a minor seven flat five. We don't want that. We want the eleven. You can even do it over here, C minor seven like this. And then just add the four on here. Same idea. But we lost our third now. So it's, it's actually just as us. So you get the third here. If you want that C minor one. You could even do it down here. Ooh, C minor one. I'm doing C minor nine. Adding on the eleven on top. So those are three ways for you to explore this, this, or this. Later, you do it here. Okay. And then B7 flat 5. We're doing tritone 7 instead of F7. But B flat, B7. Tritone. So instead of F7, B7 flat 5. And then I'm adding some filler here. You're going to love this. This is a cool trick. It's something to really practice this coming up right here. Ready for this? This. I'm going up the scale. I'm Dorian, F Dorian. Weaving in and out of the seventh chords. I call it the word that is often used in music is you're planing seventh chords like this. Minor sevens, F minor seven, G minor seven, inversion, F minor seven. G minor 7. I'll continue and that's not what I do. F minor 7. G minor 7. It's a great way for you to practice and learn your inversions. If you're a private student, many of you have already done this with me. It's kind of a Dorian modal vibe. Two, three. You practice it. It's a great practice. And so I'm using that in my arrangement here. Just as filler because there's no melody in there and I wanted something to fill or something like this. Okay. And then B flat 13. And then what do I do here? I have to see what I write here. I hope this is right. Gosh, what I do. 
Oh, uh, I need. Uh, oh, 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 I went into the Johnny Smith chord. I call this the Johnny Smith chord. Why not? The Johnny Smith. I hope you all know Johnny Smith. He's one of my heroes. I have many heroes, but he's definitely one of them. So I kind of took what he does on his famous, famous Moonlight in Vermont. It's actually a 13 with the flat nine. You slide it around every three frets. It's a little bit hipper than just a diminished seven. If you take the add on the 13 to it, here's the bass. You just do this. And that's what he does on his Moonlight in Vermont with Stan Getz, his version. I've seen some people teach him on YouTube and they, they didn't actually get that 13 on there. They need to make sure to put the 13 on there because it's so hip. F minor six, what you talking about? I don't know what you're talking about F minor six. Uh, these are F minor seven, G minor seven. F minor seven, G minor seven. 13, Johnny Smith. And that that's the B flat 13 with the flat nine have to be specific, but it's just like thinking the diminish where you want to go get that 13. That would be all over B flat. You just slide it every three frets. It's the same, same principle as a diminish, but it's coming from the half whole diminished scale, if you're wondering. Uh, if you don't know about that scale, then um, it's an eight note octatonic scale, octonic scale, symmetrical, just every. Um, in this chord, it includes that note, so it's pretty. I know what I'm going to do. I'm going to. I'm going to do a lesson on improvisation on caravan. That's what I want to do. I have a three hour video already on Patreon if you guys haven't seen it, but I go pretty in depth in the octonic scale, eight note scale with my private students. So it's, I think it's a platinum video if you guys are interested in more. I already have it, but I was thinking of doing a caravan YouTube live stream. Thanks, if you guys are enjoying this video, I know I haven't plugged it in a minute, and many minutes, but please give me this. That helps with the algos. Share, like, subscribe, whatever, all that stuff. And then um, join me on Patreon if you want, you know, to be a part of my music community. Uh, congratulations. We just finished that B section, and now we're back to the A section, which you all have memorized by now. This is where it changes, so let's get there again. Yeah, awesome. I'm excited that you guys have this arrangement down. Again, you know, I'm, I'm walking you through it note by note with a discussion on every phrase, every choice of chord, um, even all this cool. And if that's too much, I think um, you said it, I make it look easy. Uh, if, if it's a little bit too much, then just simplify. Just don't do it. <laughs> you know, just do that two, five, one like that. I just, I like that chromatic. Thanks, Virginia. Nice to see you here. Okay, let's finish it out. I got to show you the ending and then we're set. And then again, I, I want to say also, I'm going to, this is my arrangement. I, for those, anybody just tuning in, I'm going over the Christmas song by Mel Torme and Bob Wells. Classic, classic song. I'm breaking it down note for note. You can rewatch this video if you want. Join me on Patreon and the link is in the description to get the PDF, the tabs. There is one correction I've already made and it's gonna be on Sound Slice on Patreon only. Sorry, I have to do this, but, um, and that's already here. If you want, you can play along with me later and slow it way down just to show you. Great way to practice. Oh, I want 
<laughs> like, oh, I need to practice that myself. They know that song. All right. I think I heard one thing I have to fix in there, but anyways, you guys get the idea. You know, but I, I will, I'll get that set up. That's uh, all my sound slice videos are available on Patreon only. I haven't, I haven't, even though I have a sound slice public account, I have some things that are public, but I don't have anything for sale on sound slice yet. And that's only because I want to make sure I put all my videos synced to sound slice so that you can see my hands as a demonstration. I think that's a lot really valuable. But as I just demonstrated there, just to practice with it and like, oops, I didn't get that one part. You know, you know, it's just we're practicing with the computer. I can slow it down and you can slow it down and to learn it and practice it. But right now, this lesson, I think, is better because I can show you exactly what I'm thinking and what I'm doing and discuss it. Uh, thank you, Oscar. Good to see you again. Wow, this is a long one today. I didn't realize it. We still have to finish that last section. We're almost there, you guys. Thanks for hanging with me this morning. Hopefully you have some coffee or tea. And I know it's not morning for many of you right now, so maybe you're eating your dinner. <laughs> Speaking of, I need to eat some breakfast, I think, before my lessons begin. Let's finish this thing out. So again, same stuff. I'm, then, I'm not reinventing the wheel. Just doing what I did earlier. For this. this is where it changes. Ready? Yuletide carols. Right here. I changed it. Instead of C minor 7, I put A minor 7 flat 5. And then this. I'm kind of walking through this. So A minor 7 flat 5 is a sub for C minor. Just so you know, it's the same thing. C minor 7, C minor 7. C minor six is a half dim. If I want the A flat in the bass, A flat 13, G minor, then I'm doing this, those magic shape. It's magic, I love this fourth shape. If you're wondering, what's that magic shape? Stack fourth, quartal harmony. Impress your music friends. Say, yeah, I'm working on quartal harmony. Instead of tertian. That's tertian. <laughs> Music school talk. So I've got this, um, and I'm connecting it here to A half dim, and then tritone sub, A flat. You can put the bass here. We're almost done. That's such a pretty phrase. I'll repeat that. How about one more time? chord here. What did I do? Hopefully I did some hip. Oh, I just did a diminish. I'm a little disappointed in myself. That's, okay. That's pretty. And then I ended it with this chord. This is a sweet chord in E flat. The happy ending chord. E flat major, add nine. You have E flat, the nine, add Two, if you want to call it two, three, root. Just don't play the open string. <laughs> Be careful of that. You can even do just E flat major seven like this. If you want that ethereal sound. A lot of people don't know this chord, this E flat major seven chord. They're like, wait, what is that? I get that often. What is that chord? What's that beautiful chord? I'm like, well, do you know E flat seven? They go, yeah, of course. I say, then just move your flat seven over one to the major seven. You have to re finger like this a little bit. It's a beautiful chord, but I'm surprised at how it's not used often. Here's dominant seven. Everybody does this. But major seven is this. Dominant seven. Minor seven, minor six, minor six, nine. All these chords come from just really simple shapes. Just, they just have some fancy names and beautiful colors. Thank you guys so much for joining me today. It's 
been a pleasure. I think the next song we'll do is, as time goes by, we'll, we'll continue on with the sentimental songs. Diminish up. You can do that Johnny Smith chord if you would. <laughs> and then finally, maybe you're even working this new chord. Or do what I wrote here, this add two chord, if I can pull it off here. Yeah, Eric, it will be up today for sure. Get the tabs on Patreon, you guys. Thanks so much. Have an awesome day. I need more coffee. I appreciate you watching. You can leave a tip if you enjoyed this lesson. That will feel my next one. You'll get a little shout out for the coffee uh, for the next stream. I appreciate it. Uh, we'll see you next time. Um, are there any last questions before I head out for more coffee? Hmm. I'm officially out. Well, thank you all again. So great to communicate with many of you. Um, I hope you enjoyed today's lesson. And let me know in the comments if you have any requests. Remember, I'm very open to song requests. I say that on Patreon, but my Patreon members are often a little bit shy about what they want to work on. And, um, and if there's any songs I have not already covered, I've got a lot of lessons on Patreon. I have 4,200 maybe 300 posts on Patreon that covers so many songs and topics from Gypsy Jazz, Bossa Nova, Swing, um, The Great American Songbook, um, some pop rocks on Beatles and other stuff too. So check it out if you're not already a Patreon member. Thanks guys. Have a great day. We'll see you next time. Cheers.